Corinne's Picks. I'm your host, Corinne Basabe. Corinne's Picks is a show about remarkable works of art and the incredible careers of renowned artists. Today we have with us Steve Armstrong. I'm so glad that you're willing to come to the show today and talk about your photography. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You know, I've really enjoyed looking at your photographs. They really capture, you know, the feeling of New York City, but also I love the 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 lines and some of the things you do with architecture. Tell us a little bit about your photography and what you're trying to do with your work. Well, um, you know, I just, a lot of my work is what I feel, like a lot of artists. We, we, do, we, 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 we do things that we feel, unless we're given an assignment. But a lot of it is how I feel. So I would consider myself maybe a street photographer or an event photographer, whereas I would walk down the street and whatever I see. You know, I, I love watching people. So I would, if I can catch people doing anything, I, I take it. So I'm kind of an, an opportunist. And that's, that's kind of like my forte to, to just watch people. And it could be, doesn't have to be necessarily people. It could be animals. It could be cars. It could be anything that's going on. And that's part of what I, I really enjoy doing uh, as far as photography is concerned. You know, uh, I love architecture. I love walking the cities. I was going to do a, a, a little display on the clocks around New York. There's so many clocks and different kinds and shapes. And then there's the buildings. You know, you have a lot of artwork on buildings. You have a lot of history on the buildings. And, and I think that that's so important to just bring together, you know, uh, as a portfolio as the, in sorts to, uh, to show that to people. Because a lot of people, we, we're on our way to work. We're walking down, we're, we're not looking around, we're not stopping to smell the proverbial roses, so yeah, to speak. I want to show, you know, I don't want to talk <clears throat> too long because sometimes we run out of time, we yeah. don't show enough of the images, so I, I do want to show the images. But before we do that, tell me a little bit about how you became a photographer. Well, uh, I, I love the family thing. It was starts in the family. We had the little Instamatic cameras, point and shoot, and then I went into printing. And in college, I studied lithography, which is another form of photography, but it was with bigger sheets of film, 8 by 10s, or, or considered small. And I, I love the color, the color separation aspect of it and the half-tone half aspect of it. And we would take little cameras, take a picture, blow it up, enlarge it, and make it big. So it was something that I, I really just started to play with as a young person. And then I bought myself a little camera, and turn my kitchen into a dark room. And you know, this is analog, you know, with the film and uh, developing black and white. So I think you know, I'd really love to look, to talk a little bit more about that, but first let's let's look at the first image and maybe you could give us a little bit of background on this piece. Oh yeah, that's um that's botanical gardens. That's during the uh the, the holiday season they have the train show. And it was uh it was a bridge, and I was walking around, and they had different bridges with different trains set up. And as I, t I took a lot of pictures of the, a lot of the buildings that they show around the city they display, but I also said, let me look at the younger side. So I took it, and I'll just take a picture, and that's the underside of a bridge. I actually, I, I chose that one. You know, you sent me a bunch of images, but I chose that one because I just really liked the the lines, the symmetry and yes. the lines. Um, and I wasn't sure, you know, it, it kind of even works as, if I look at it as a painter, Right. it's something that I really enjoy looking at. Yes, it, it, I, I see that like also, um, I have a few, quite a few pictures similar to that. Um, I would do benches, that line, or fences. Right, uh, right. Years ago, out here at Lehman, um, I, I standing near a fence and I just took my camera towards the side and just caught the line got all the spoke all the way down so I, I, I love those lines okay can I see the, the next one what what inspired you about taking this shot the rainbow it just finished raining and this is near Lehman College that's Tracy Towers and uh, it was out there and I had my camera. I mean, for photographers, we say, uh, one of our mottos is uh, walk with a camera. 
So I saw that and I saw the rainbow, the way it just angled up like that. And I said, let me get that. And I just took that shot. It's even interesting because I know Tracy Towers has had a reputation as, you know, having a lot of challenges. So it's yes. kind of nice to put yes. a, a yes. rainbow to the left of it. Um, I guess nature put the rainbow, actually. Yes. But I, I put it together because, listen, I've heard some stories about Tracy Towers. So what has been the learning curve for you in terms of being a photographer or, you know, learning the craft? Oh, it's, it, well, first of all, it's moving very fast. I mean, from analog to digital, it moves so fast. And then, um, you know, one of the things that you hear a lot, or I've heard a lot, was that I don't take good pictures, I make great pictures. So it's not you setting up your camera so much as it is what you do in post-production. Oh, interesting. You know, and that's where the changes have, you know, some of those changes have come along. And I find myself one that I don't want to do all of that post-production. I mean, you can make things pop. You can add a lot of color, bright color, make things look beautiful. But when you set up your camera, you do your composition, you you um, you set up your your, your f-stop and your you know your everything. You you you, you take you use the uh, the art in the craft, so to speak. When you use that to take a picture, like we had to, we had to wait for the film to be developed, you know. So when you do that and you can get a great picture, with a, without with minimal work, I find it to be the most exciting part of it for me. But do you miss some of the the um, steps that you had to go through when you were doing it analog? In terms of, you don't know what's going to come. You you have it in the chemicals. And you're lifting it up. You printing, waiting for it to develop. You miss some of that, at least. I do. The mystery mm -hmm. of that. I do, I do, I do, and I do have some analog cameras at the house. So are you house. doing you doing both? Are you developing still and and doing digital work? Or are you? No, no, I haven't done any. Uh, you know, uh, developing in a long time. But I, I did it so long, I know exactly how, how to do it, what to do. So it's like it's embedded. I like the digital and using the computer to, to enhance the photos to some degree, even though I try to keep that to a minimum. And I do miss, I do miss, you know, uh, the developer, you know, <laughs> developing the film and, and doing that whole process. I'll wait, I'm good, I can wait. No. Okay, so I want to look at some more images because I know um, my next question to you, we're going to get into a long conversation about AI, but let's look at some more, <laughs> some more images first. <clears throat> Tell me a little bit about this one. I mean, I love the shapes. And that's what I loved. I saw that building. I was in Maryland near the, uh, near the water, and that, that just struck me. And it was a beautiful day. It was in June. It was a beautiful day, and I saw that, and I said, wow, let me just take a picture of that. And it's, you know, it's where people live, but it just looks like a monument, almost like, like a mountain, Mount Rushmore or something. And, this, and, 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 and to be honest with you, there's nothing deep behind the pictures, some of the pictures that I've taken. There's no, you know, philosophical reason why I took them. I see something that catches my eye, and I said, let me take that. Let me see what I can do with that. It caught your eye for a reason, though. Oh, yeah. It, the shape of that building. The, it the way caught that, your eye, yeah. yeah. You know, so it's not, you know. Because we're always making decisions in art. We, it's a choice. It is. Because it you is. could have taken a picture of that truck and said, oh, these wheels look interesting. <laughs> I sure could have. Okay. <clears throat> so let's, let's see another one, please. Okay, thank you. I love, this is one of my favorite, this one. Yeah, mine tell, too. Tell me a little bit about this. So this is a, I assume it's a water tower? tower. It's, to me, it's a lighthouse. Oh, okay. It's a lighthouse. It's on land, but it's a lighthouse. But the colors pop. That red just, just took my breath away when I saw it. Like you said, your eye, it, something grabs you about it. And, and, with the, and with the clouds behind it, you see that blue sky was so clear. And I think it was the same day as the other picture. That just, I said, let me just and take... And this odd, oddly shaped thing in the middle of an urban setting. It looks like, to me, it almost looks like a spaceship. Right. You know, it's really very, very interesting. It's a very interesting... But it's near the water. Oh, it is oh, near, it oh, is oh, near it is, the water. Where is it? It's in Maryland. Oh, that's it's Maryland? Maryland, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so um, here's my big question. What are your feelings on AI? 
uh, used properly, however you want to define that, it's a good thing. You know, it's like the iPhone, or the, it's like the iPhone, it's like the telephone, it's like the automobile. We want those things. And then we learn about the, the, the negatives about it, so to speak. We're not really ready for it. We're, not, we, we're really not. People have gotten caught doing crazy things with the iPhone and have been used, you know, nefariously, so to speak. And cars have been, we've been hitting people. We had to develop other things. So along with AI, there's going to be rules and regulations that's going to be implemented so that it can be used a certain way. Using it the right way, using it for uh, voiceovers, using it for information on telephones. In some places you call now, you get, you get a response from AI. You know, using it that way, is, it's great. But to step over and use it for in negatives is something that we, we have to learn how to work with and hopefully that research is done and you know so that we can prevent those pitfalls yeah I'm not that interested in AI for myself as an artist because I like the process but I am thrilled with some of the cre some of the things people are creating with using AI some of the images um, that look so lifelike some of the right. some of some of them are very painterly some of them you know, I don't know, sometimes I can't tell whether it's AI or not, but I just love their far-reaching um, imagination of, of some of these um, products. Yes, yes. That's, that's the one thing about us as, as human beings. You know, when we get together, you know, I tell people, just put it out there for a minute and see what comes back, you know, and you'll get a host of ideas. And those things are, are, are great, but you always have that little... Like they even have a dark web. <laughs> you'll always have that. But for the most part, you'll have a lot of things that are so positive and that can always add to our society in a helpful way, which is great. So we have about, I guess, 30 seconds until we go to a two-minute PSA. Um, so we'll continue talking when we come back. Kids! I don't want to talk about it. 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 Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Kids, you all right? This family's prepared. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Go to nyc.gov slash readyny or call 311 for more information. Is this time yet? It's time. Pasta <gasps> Jenna! Donating pet food is one of the many ways you can help families in your community. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Welcome back to Corinne's Picks. I'm your host, Corinne Basabe. We've had the pleasure of talking to Steve Armstrong, brilliant photographer. Uh, we were talking about AI before uh, we went to break. Um, I, I totally agree with you. Um, there are dangers yes. with AI, um, but there are also a lot, a, lot, a lot of good stuff coming out, Positive, too. Right. So I think it, it's about balance. So I, I want to show some more of your images so um, that we get through all of them. Okay. And then okay. I have a big question for you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this one. Surprisingly, those are just um, pipes for, um, um, uh, what are they called? When, they, when they're doing workouts, that's scaffolding. Oh, oh interesting. They're, they're scaffolding, and I saw the different colors. 
Interesting. And there goes those lines again, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in Brooklyn. There's a big studio, a big uh, warehouse mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. And I came outside and I happened to look up, you know, and I saw that. I said, wow, let me just take a picture of that. Took a, a few pictures of it. And it just, it was something that caught my eye, you know. Yeah, I, I love I love that. Um, I love um, that ph photograph. I was, you know, something about the lines and, you know, empty space. Yes. I'm, you know, I'm not sure why, but I just li I liked it. I, I see the world through eyes of a painter. So, you know, it's something would have, that would have been an interesting painter for me as mm -hmm. well. Um, so let's look at let's look at another image. Tell us a little bit about this one. This is this is New York, or is this the other state? Well, this is New York. This okay. is uh, New York skyline. Okay. I was in um, uh, Brooklyn Heights. Okay. The promenade. And I took quite a few of these pictures, um, and that's you know, just the, the skyline. It's it's always it's so interesting, because New York skyline, even though it's gotten high, it changes constantly. You know, you could take a picture in, say, 2023. <clears throat> and maybe in 2033, that the same picture, that same area, that skyline is going to change a little bit. It'll be a different building. They make it bigger. They make it diff differently shaped and things like that. And I've always found that to be interesting to watch that. This is, it's a, in a sense, it's a documentation of time or our times. So how did you get the, col <clears throat> the color? Is that the, is that the color that, that was seen, or did you... Did you um, do something to the image to make it that color? I um, I did mess with the color a little bit. I did play with it a little okay. bit. I, I actually um, like it very much. I did play with it. I softened it, made it a little softer. There was some yellow, pops of yellow in there. And I just played with it because it was, it was a bright, sunny day. And then I wanted to just soften it a little bit. I think it makes it more interesting to, to, to um, have it like a monocolor, right. like shades of um, blue, gray. Yeah, and, and another side with the post-production, like I said, you could make it pop if you wanted to. And I just thought that would have been really hard, you know, on, on the picture. So I just wanted to soften it up a little Are bit. Are you working but in Photoshop? I, very little, okay. very little. It's, it's, it's something that I tried to avoid, but I know for the better shots, if you want to get something that people are going to be, ooh, ah, you know, you go, they, they make it, you know, they, they, they do that to make it pop and things like that. So. Okay. Um, so can I have an, another image, please? Um, they have the image. Okay, this is the right. image that we had. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's quite different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you can see it there a little bit better. So, that, so <clears throat> okay, so you ha the waterfall, I guess. It's coming, it's that's, coming that's, right. You're, you're coming towards us. the waves, the after effects. Right. Okay, and the reflection. What is it a reflection of that I'm looking at? Well, you see, there's a lot of, you know, I was up upstate in Salem, New York. Okay. I was going across a little bridge, mm -hmm. and I just saw a little, a little area to take a picture, and that's all I did. Oh, okay. And I was able to catch that, and you have a lot of little trees, little branches okay. coming across, and it just stopped. It's, it goes back to what I said. You know, I say all the time, it's something that catches my eye. I said, let me give it a shot. Yeah, but it's always a reason let why. Me, let me give it a it's shot. It's catching your eye okay. for a reason. So, yeah, so I just take it and see, you know, and play it's with it. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's a moment. It is a moment. It's a moment. Okay, so, um, okay, so let's... let's Responsibility of, uh, of, of artists. Yes. Of you. Of, what, of, of Pers me. At the personal level. Do well, you see, based on what you're producing, do you see that... Um, you know, is there a responsibility in terms of what you're producing, the outcome of what you're producing? Okay. Or, or your choice, some of your choices. I I think so. I think so. On, uh, on me me personally, yes, there, there is a there is a responsibility that I'm going to one try to personally I'm going to try to get the best picture that I can of whatever scene it is I'm taking a picture of. I'm going to be careful not to infringe on someone else's space or whatever. If they have, they're uncomfortable with me taking a picture of them or a scene, 
uh, I'll back right up. It's not a problem. So I do have, I take certain responsibilities in what I shoot, what I do. If you notice, a lot of my shots are buildings, inanimate things. You know, I do take pictures of people, and I, I, I enjoy that. But it, I try not to be intrusive. Okay. You know, okay. so it's 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 important to me, and I think, I think for the most part, I think some some photographers have bumped into trouble. You know, taking taking pictures or the wrong type of pictures and getting some some negative feedback for it or getting some legality okay. uh, popping up over that. So I try to avoid those things. So do you think it's censorship when people decide um, that like certain images of certain works of art like might um, be negative towards certain communities or, st or should artists be free to just express themselves? I, for the most part, I think artists should be free to express themselves. And I think that when it's in a, when it's in a particular area, you have that option. It's almost like turning your cheek, your television. Um, I, I'm doing this. I guess I'm aging myself uh, with the knob. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, 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 you can change that channel. You know, if you want to go to MoMA or if you wanted to go to the Museum of Natural History or any Wells of Guggenheim, you, have, you can go in there or you don't have to go in there. But it should be available for all of us. I think we're... we're intellectual enough. I think we're, you know, s sophisticated enough to to be able to make that decision. Yeah, I, I, I really like your answer. I, I would happen to agree with you, but I also would add that um, I think it's sometimes unfair that certain people have, I guess, the, the machinery or, or the, the ability to, um, like, flood the market with one kind of expression over another. Right. And sometimes I think... Um, I think people should have an equal access to all kind of images of themselves. Yes. Because sometimes I think it's an act of manipulation if you're trying to get people to see themselves a certain way by flooding them with certain kinds of images of themselves in the name of art. Right. So, I mean, it, it gets really tricky, but in general I do, I, I would agree with a lot of things that you said. Right. I mean, there was an exhibit some years ago where uh, an artist did work with dung. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I remember that. Uh -huh. And he got mm -hmm. a lot of, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. problems with that. Mm -hmm. And hey, it goes back to it was it was this form of, of expression mm -hmm. that he wanted to, you know, that okay. he wanted to present. So I want to make sure I, I, we have four images left. I want to make sure I got through all of them. So can we have the next image? Um, tell us a little bit about this one. I don't even know who that is. Oh yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, that's Robin Williams. Uh, he was at a, a photo store. I was standing outside uh, um, on 34th Street, 9th Avenue. I was with a friend of mine. Can't really recall who that friend is. L Larry, my friend Larry. And uh, we were standing outside. I saw this figure just walk in, you know, trying to cloak himself, trying to hide. And he walked in, and I happened to pick up. I said, wait. I said, Larry, that's, that's Robin Williams. Went inside, and he was very gracious. Whenever I catch a... Uh, a star, uh, perform, or someone like that. I'm honored to be able to that they they allow me to take their picture. We we had three pictures of him. He he, he said it was okay. If you notice, he's really he's looking at he's looking at us. He has a little smile on his face, and he's he's one of my favorite comedians. Okay, can right. I have the next image, please? <clears throat> She was there. <laughs> she was there. She was in her phone. I, I liked the colors around her, as subtle as they were. That was uh, the uh, <clears throat> Brooklyn Heights. And I was out there just taking pictures, and I saw her there. She was so into her phone. I said, let me just, and the blue boots, you know, and everything just, you know, just worked together. So I just took the picture. Okay, can I have the next, next image? And this one? This one tickled me. <clears throat> Young baby. The father says, okay, I'll take you out. I'll, I'll take the baby out. Get the baby outside. 
finds a bench, he sits down, he falls asleep, and the baby falls asleep. That's very I thought very, that was I thought sweet. that was so funny. Very sweet. And I just couldn't let that go. I said, "Wow, look at this!" Everybody. I think we have um, one more image. Wonder who this is. <laughs> <coughs> That's a friend of mine. It's a uh, very famous photographer. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. Um, uh, we were at a friend's house. Can you say, this is um, this is Larry. Larry Hendrickson. Hendrickson yeah, the yeah. photographer. Brilliant photographer. Uh, yes, we were at a friend's house, and I just, I think I picked up my base because I think that my base is on the, on his left, my right, right side, and I was showing it to a friend. Oh, you played the base as well. I look at it mostly, <laughs> <clears throat> but I do try to pluck on it a little bit and play. But okay, so we have uh, two minutes left. Um, what are you going to bite off as a challenge for the future? Like, where is your photography going to go? Like, what's your next challenge? Well, <clears throat> part of my challenge is with photography moving as fast as it is. You know, um, I want to do more in, in post-production. And a lot of a lot of places are well, a lot of things that are coming up is not just the still photography aspect of it, but also video. Because still pictures, they give a picture, they give a view. But that video gives you that moment. It completes that moment. You know, um, you can't add or subtract from that moment, so to speak, when it's when there's a video of it. It's out there. I could take a picture, a still, and then I could tell you what happened and what was going on. But that's, that's my perspective or someone else's perspective. But that video, it's there. You can't do anything about it. So, yeah, I, I like that as a challenge. The okay. field is changing so fast. There's always going to be challenges if you're willing to take them. A lot of us find those comfort zones. We say, well, I'm, I'll stick to this and I'll do that. But I, I think I want to... Do some traveling. I want to get some of those, you know, beautiful spots, beautiful shots. Okay, and so I think we've <clears> run out of time. So, you know, we've ha we'll have to have you back and continue talking about okay. your craft as a photographer. Thank you for being on the show. This has been Corinne Spix. Thank you for having me.